How we doing, guys? What? I, I still can't hear you. There we go. All right, all right. Now you got it going on. All right, the first thing we're going to start with, this it's broken down in two sections, really. You've got the fish and you've got the noodles. The sauces I already did ahead of time for you. We'll talk about those here in a second. The first thing we're going to do so we don't spend too much time on this one is get the noodles going. Now these are... Uh, they're bean thread noodles. They're also called cellophane noodles. Some people call them glass noodles. They're, uh, it's an Asian style uh, noodle. It is made of a white bean. And they are, for those of you, I know there's a lot of people out there with food sensitivities and allergies, these are actually a gluten-free item. So it's everything we're doing today on this dish. If you have gluten sensitivities, uh, can be done in your own home and it is gluten-free. So we're going to take, just kind of stuff them down in there. These will cook up similar to pasta. They will take a little bit longer. So we're just going to get those working right there. All right, on your second burner, you're going to need to go a dry pan. No oil, no nothing. What we've got is just basic unsalted pecan pieces. You can get them at, I mean, Harris Teeter, wherever you go, Food Line, you know, Piggly Wiggly wherever anybody wants to shop. Dry pan, high heat, and just let them go. You're, all you're gonna do is toast them. You're gonna start smelling it. They're gonna start, you don't wanna burn them. There's a difference between toasting and burning, and it goes like that. So you're gonna get them going on a hot pan. Just give them a little toss, a little toss. And just let them work. Next component to the noodles, cilantro. Fresh cilantro. For what we're working with, you're probably gonna want about a cup and a half of raw product. And you're just gonna make a pile. Now the easiest way, a lot of people pick cilantro. The stems actually are edible on the product, so all you do is just ball it up. Just a nice tight ball. And you're just gonna come and just cut it down. Turn it the opposite direction. And just work. Now you gotta be mindful at the same time you've got things going on other burners. I'll be able to multitask slightly if you're doing it at your house with a little bit more relaxed, glass of wine, whatever you want to do. Cilantro is done. It's right into a mixing bowl. Clean her up a little bit. All right, pecans. Starting to toast up. Getting that little roasted smell. You let them go for a little bit. Your noodles. So these noodles become almost clear when they're finished. They're not quite done. All right, so we're going to talk about our spice for our tuna and the two sauces we're doing. All right, the tuna itself is going to be seared dry in a pan. We use our house-made blackening spice. Um, I'm not going to tell you exactly what's in it, but it's uh, main components, chili powder, paprika, a little cayenne, uh, fresh dried thyme, and a few other things. Now once your pecans are getting toasted, is these, these are done. Just gonna dump them right into your bowl. Turn off your flame. We're gonna come back, we're gonna use that same pan to sear our sashimi. It's already got that nice toasted pecan taste into the pan. We're also gonna sear the sashimi dry, so instead of washing a whole bunch of dishes, you can use the same pan. So we're talking about the blackening spice. The three sauces you're gonna need, you don't have to have them, we use them at the restaurant. All right, you can buy wasabi powder, dry, green. You take it and you mix it with rice wine vinegar. That's what forms the paste that you get at, at sushi restaurants. Rice wine vinegar and wasabi powder. We take it a little bit farther and turn it into a wasabi aioli. It helps, it helps cut some of the heat from the wasabi. It makes it a little bit easier to work with. It becomes more of a sauce than a paste. The second sauce you're gonna need is just a sweet chili sauce. 
you can make it. Um, recipes are available online. You can buy it. They're a great store. They're a great store. Ready-made products. And the last sauce we're going to use is a chipotle soy mustard. And it's just as it sounds. It's chipotle peppers, soy sauce, Dijon mustard, and oil. That's all it is. Put it into a blender, mix it up, and you have your sauces. All right, this tuna we've got here is a beautiful, beautiful yellowfin tuna we got uh, courtesy of Wan Chi Seafood Company. So we cleaned it down, we've cut it into pieces, you know, inch and a half, inch and a half around. That's gonna help you when you slice it, it's not gonna wanna break apart, and it's also gonna make it be more bite-sized pieces. So all we're gonna do is just roll it in the spice. And if you look at it, I don't know if y'all can see the, uh, the color and the consistency on these noodles from where you're sitting. Are these, you can test them just like pasta. Still not quite ready? All right, once again, dry hot pan. Because this is going to be a seared item. You want to get it in and out, seared on all sides, about equal thickness all the way around, as fast as possible. So all you can do is just set it in, and you'll begin to see the color change on the tuna. That's why you only put, I personally, only put the spice around the end. I don't put it on the cut end so that I have a, a visual reference of how far I'm cooking that fish through. And I say, you talking, you might cook it a quarter inch all the way around. You've got that nice, dark brown toasted on your spices and you've just got that ring of cooked right there along the outside. And I said as you slice that and you, and you shingle it out on your plate, it's going to look gorgeous. It's going to make it easier when you go to slice it. It's, gonna, it's not going to be as delicate. And uh, two, it makes it one of those things you can do a day ahead of time. This will hold in the fridge. If you get your tuna fresh, it'll hold in the fridge for two to three days. Alright, we've almost got all of our tuna done and we're going to jump back on the noodles. There is an important step to the noodles that we have not gone over yet. Alright, y'all see that tuna? Y'all see how nice that looks? It's beautiful tuna, see? And it's simple. Anybody can do it. Once you get your noodles to the point where they're done, you're going to want to very carefully not to burn yourself one with the steam or the hot water. Drain all the hot water off of them. It's just like pasta. Just drain all the water off of them. Key part. Cooling them back down. You want to, it's what they call shocking when you blanch vegetables, boil them, pull them out, put them in ice water, stop the cooking process. Now all you do, you're going to combine all your ingredients back into the bowl where you toasted your pecans and diced your cilantro and you're going to come back with your sweet chili sauce. And you're just going to give it a whole bunch of love. And all you do is mix it. You just want to make sure you get it all mixed in. Get a nice equal distribution of your pecans and your cilantro. All you got to do now is plate. That's it. Simple as it gets. Noodles, fish, sauce. It's a beautiful plate. It's fresh. It's local. That's tuna sashimi.